Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are going to do what uh, chat has indicated today, which is something fun. We're going to do a pickup MTGA draft draft. That means uh, going to our friend Senryoku's third party website over at mtgadraft.herokuapp.com, where we will draft uh, on Senryoku's site. Uh, use, we're going to do Dominaria. Dominaria was chosen. We're going to do a Dominaria draft on this website, and then we're going to export the resulting decks over to Arena and then use the friend challenge system to play out the matches on Arena. So it's a couple, you know, we do this a, a lot around here. One of the reasons we like it is because I get to play with viewers. It's it's fun to have people around at the time involved in the game and, and uh, involved in chat. I think it's fun engagement. But it's also a way to draft and play in pod for no in-game resources as long as you have the cards already. And most of the participants here have been uh, playing Arena for a while and either have the wild cards or the collections to be able to play the resulting decks we're going to get from this Dominaria draft. And one of the but the nice thing is that uh, we you know the, the, the drafting in pod means paying attention to what you're passing actually matters so much more than it does in the uh, kind of traditional arena style of draft where you draft again draft in pod but you don't play those players so by playing the people we draft against we're going to pay a lot more attention to what we're passing uh it's going to change what we're playing around in game you know if we pass six copies of some uh, instant speed removal spell that we are uh, and we're not in that color well <laughs> during the games we should be playing around that removal spell right so there's a lot of interesting strategic pluses to playing in pod that are part of the reason why there's some purists out there who just won't draft unless you do play in pod. Uh, they're pretty pretty firm about that because of these little details. Now, I love magic in so many forms that I'm willing to accept some, uh, some edges shaved off for a smoother experience in terms of time and, and flexibility, but certainly I do love a nice, pure... Uh, true in pod draft, although true the purest of pure would be if we were playing best of three and establishing who in our pod was going to go 3-0. But because we have seven people totally willing to play today, we're going to do it uh, gauntlet style, which is to say best of one. Everybody gets one shot at taking me down, and we're going to see whether or not uh, this group of seven can uh, manage four or more wins against me today. And that gives every one of them a chance to play on screen, and, and that's that's fun, too. So hopefully everybody will have a good time with this, and you'll learn a lot about Dominaria. Something else I want to teach you is that my sponsor, Card Kingdom, is one of the best purveyors of physical magic gear in the industry. Their tabletop magic inventory is second to none. They are aggressively pursuing uh, all of the cards that they don't have yet, so if they have any inventory missing... They are looking to buy it so they can uh, make it available to you. That means if you have, uh, maybe you got a closet full of cards and you can uh, ship them off to Card Kingdom for some bank because they pay more for cards than anybody else. On average, you're going to find individual exceptions, but on average, they pay more than anybody else. And I, I hit on that note a lot. So hang on to your links to cardkingdom.com. You can make a bookmark. Uh, make sure you get there from here, though. If you go get uh, from the link in the panels in down below, the link in chat or the link in the YouTube notes, it's going to get you there from here. They're going to know that you got there from here, and that's going to help me stay on the air and make Card Kingdom happy. It all matters. You know, they, they associate your future business with me when you use my affiliate link. And then uh, when I sit down and talk with them, we look over the numbers. So it, it all is uh, directly impactful and super, super appreciated. Um, maybe if you don't even have some, something you could do that uh, is, is noticed and helpful that won't cost you any money is you can uh, use my affiliate link, go to Card Kingdom and create an account there. You know, just uh, be ready to use Card Kingdom. And, and they, even though, they even know that, that I'm like creating accounts. So that's something you could do too if you, if you didn't want to spend money but wanted to uh, put something in my cup. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm going to hop over here. We've got our group ready. We're going to switch over to the old left monitor, and I'll tweak this just a touch. We got chat up there in the corner ready to check this out. If you this is your first time to an MTGA draft draft, here you go. It's a fairly utilitarian site, but that's exactly what we want and need. We don't, I don't need Flash. I need features, and boy, this site has the features. Thank you, Senryoku, for the awesome tech. 
Uh, I'm ready to go. We can do a ready check here, Hat, and uh, see if everybody's ready to, to, to make their picks. And yes, uh, Hat reminds, uh, buy a coffee. You can uh, use the buy, a, buy me a coffee link down at the bottom of the website and uh, drop a tip in Senryoku's jar as well, and that would, would be fine. Looks like we're good to go, Hat. Um, check didn't make it through everybody, but... Let's draft some Dominaria. So Dominaria, uh, I strongly prefer being in the Sultai colors, if possible. Then, uh, but I like a red-blue wizard's deck. And, you know, a white, white, black. You know, white as a splash color or a uh, support color is great. But for me, there's uh, two cards that leap out. I think longtime viewers and longtime Dominaria drafters uh, probably know what I'm looking at here. And number one is Vicious Offering. One of the, my mantra for this set is uh, survive until you can recur value. Like that's my one line, how to draft Dominaria. And Vicious Offering uh, does the survive until part. Uh, the other card I'm looking at is Grow from the Ashes. Maybe a little early for a Grow, but I first picked it before. Uh, I talk about the Sultai colors. Green is excellent at splashing in the format because of Grow from the Ashes at with green and um, Skitters in colorless. So between uh, Skitters and Grow from the Ashes, uh, green has access to a couple of premium fixers, uh, whereas the other colors only have the access to one. Although that's even nice for the other colors. Often they don't get that even access to one. So these are the two I'm looking at. Then then Arvad after that. So what's going to wheel? Nothing is super relevant. It's going to wheel. I would say if Avon Sentry comes around, I'm going to have to consider seriously uh, abandoning whatever we're doing and being the white drafter because this is... A pretty strong card for the pack. I mean, it's not super exciting, but relative to what else is going on here, this is uh, nice, strong enough that if we still see this in the pack on the way back, we should uh, strongly consider it. Although, anyway, we're going to take the uh, Vicious Offering to start and be pretty happy about that. Traxos is interesting. You can totally take it and build around it in this format. Uh, Sapperling Migration is also excellent and actually goes along with the black. Uh, green black is, is very powerful and uh, is a good sapperling based color. So pretty easy sapperling migration or Traxos pulling me in very different directions. Um, curious what chat thinks about this one. Yeah, that's true. We can take Traxos and Wheel the Servant. Maybe that's enough. I love uh, sticking a toe in the in the green direction here, especially with our Vicious Offering. I mean, it's a perfect one-two pick, but Traxos is good enough to build around. We'll take it. I don't know if we're going to build around it, but it's good enough to build around, so we'll take it and see. Is Phoenix any good if you're already red? I didn't really ever like the Phoenix. I don't remember what its like return clause is. It's like what you're attacking with three creatures. Uh, I've I've hardly ever seen the Phoenix come back from the dead, and a four mana two power flyer, even with haste, isn't that good. But you'll play it in that. In if you're aggro red, you can play it. It's just not very exciting. It's not like a fist pump of any kind. Hey, Dylan. Dylan is just tuning in to our pickup chat draft, pickup gauntlet. No hair is on the line today, but it's the same format. Bad pack so far, or like good drafting around us? Because uh, really kind of empty packs. I almost want to take the Hinterland Harbor, given my predilection for uh, for Sultai, and give myself a means to splash. Uh, there's this Sentry. Given I was talking about how it might have to be the white deck if the Sentry comes around, I could take the Sentry now and, and, and lean towards it if that happens. Um...
Well, maybe Radiant Wear. What if I go 0 and 7 today, though? What if today was the day that you would have gotten me, and then I actually just get it out of the way, and then it never happens again? See? Check meet. Uh, back to what I'm doing, though. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take Sentry yet. I like the harbor. I, I, I'm, I'm really trying to avoid red-white. I think the table knows it. The table knows my, my preferences. But I'm still not going to take... I mean, I'm not going to... There's nothing here to take. Like, I take a Lance. Lance is good if you do end up in the Sapperlings, because turning your Sapperlings into 3-1 first strikes is pretty good. So a little bit bold. This is not exactly a uh, <laughs> a cube or anything where a third pick dual land is a little bit more in line with conventional wisdom. But this is kind of a sign of how much I want to be in Sultai. I'm willing to push it. And now here I get uh, some options to continue pushing it. We got the Grow from the Ashes, which uh, helps with a lot of stuff. Uh, Soul Salvage is, I really want one of on a Soul Salvage in black decks, if not two. Academy Drake is an excellent flexible card. Danatha still being here continues to say, and, and like, look, Danatha, Gideon's Reproach, Will and Honor Guard are not real cards. It, you know, they don't say anything to me. Um, uh, but uh, Danatha is quite tempting. Oh yeah, I should mention that this is a uh, one. Of, this is my proudest magic design. Uh, I've I don't have I don't have many magic cards in print that I can point at and say that was me. I came up with that and they printed it. But first eruption is certainly one. This was um, I was spent uh, I spent about a month on the Dominaria design team, and this was one of my contributions during that month. Anyway, I'm gonna take grow. It's true, um, you, you're making a good point, but I'm going to follow my foibles and take the grow. A lot of medium stuff here, but there is a Windgrace Acolyte and an Academy Drake, which are both fine. Um, don't have any blue yet other than the ability to splash it. Might take the wind grace on that front. Yeah, I'm going to take wind grace. Academy Drake, I think, is a little bit better, but we, we're, uh, I'd rather uh, plant a flag further in black than start on blue. I might regret not taking Dan Danatha and just embracing the white. Some of my most successful drafts in Dominaria are when I'm the one who's like, fine, I'll play white. I don't think I've really had a successful red-white deck, but I've had plenty of successful white decks. Now what? See, oh, and now the Sanctum Spirit, like, see, I think I gotta take Sanctum Spirit and probably regret not taking the, 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 the legendary uncommon. I also like that we took, uh, you know, our best cards are black because black, if I am gonna be white, I like black, white. And Sanctum Spirit as the lifelink threatening to discard, I think is a little bit better than the uh, flying, although they're, they're close. Evasion is great, but uh, threat of activation and lifelink also great.
Yeah, exactly. White black legendary is a thing, which is why somebody said I should have taken the the. Is it Danatha? Now I forget. Yeah, her the card's name, but you know me, that happens. So I took a grow instead, and if we had a if we had the captain, it would be pretty perfect. So, slight regret. But interesting. Uh, um, the glider is at least a historic an historic card that triggers Traxos. Um, we could take wild onslaught, and still know that we could end up in uh, green black saps. I think glider is so medium. Like, the stuff that goes towards White Black uh, Traxos, Partic Wanderer, and Glider, and Disciple, they're all incredibly weak, which is why I don't want to be in this deck. So I'm going to take uh, Wild Onslaught and stay uh, draft the hard way a little bit here. Just uh, if we do end up in Green Black Saps, we'll be so happy to have the Onslaught and be so happy that we dodged being the one forced to deviate from Sultai. But... So I'm not going to follow down the Sanctum Traxos path uh, for those cards. So got a Jousting Lance that will trigger Traxos and could be good if we end up in Saps. So. This isn't amazing, but it's doing, it's it's actually contributing to both of the places we're leaning. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it. It's not very good in the Traxos deck though, because all it's really doing there is triggering Traxos. And um, this is good if you're on the front foot and being aggressive, but it's not really how I wanna play the format. Well, if uh, green black saps are the fun guys, then I guess, yeah, Boros is the fun police. I wonder if Boros is, has an advantage over green black saps because of that. Yes, there is a uh, turtle. Oh, wow. Someone gacked our Traxos combo card. Druid is not good, but... Grudgingly playable. So we'll take the grudgingly playable Kroos and Druid here over the Opt or the Shard or the Six Drop. Don't really need to prioritize Six Drops. There, anyway, there's a there's a Arcane Flight and there's a big six mana Hexproofer. So the combo is to put the Plus one, plus zero, and flying, or plus one, plus one, and flying on the uh, four, five hexproof. On Sarah's wings, if you can get it, is uh, even better, of course. But the 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 thing about uh, arcane flight and the hexproof creatures that they're both common and they're both blue. So single color common combo is is that one. Evangel protector or opt opt is playable if we end up. Sultai, I mean, I know we have no blue yet, but it's still actually possible we end up there. But I'll just take a random two. I don't like playing a Cabal Evangel, but you do what you gotta. And if we're trying to survive until we can recur value, Evangel drops on two and helps you do that. This is just an answer to what are you doing on turn two? Very little else. And it's really bad in the format because the format generally has things that you can do on two or on six. So like playing a Cabal Evangel uh, in a set with Skin Witch just feels bad. Pretty easy Primordial Worm, though. If you're going to get a big six drop, you can uh, do a lot worse than this one. Uh, sometimes this is just big enough. Like at six toughness, it dodges all of the damage based removal at common. Adamant Will, in case we do end up back here. Yeah, Dub called. I am not a fan of Dub. But you do what you must in the aggro white decks. If you're just absolutely... Look, my plan is curving out 
and applying pressure on the dirtily decks, then you do what you gotta, but it's not what I want to be doing here. The green we've been picking up late here is not exciting. Here's the Arcane Flight I was talking about. But I think we can main a Broken Bond in the format, and we aren't blue yet. We have the Grow, and like I like to be Sultai, and we have a Hinterland Harbor, so we, we're kind of maybe light blue, but the Arcane Flight is not what you want to be dabbling in blue for. So we'll just take a Broken Bond, maybe we run it. It's looking like uh, the white's not happening. And that means Traxos probably not happening either. Eh, maybe I missed a boat there. I think if we take that captain instead of the gone, uh, in instead of the grow from the ashes, we'd be in a much different and uh, pretty interesting spot. More weak packs, nothing great here. Probably taking a Thalid Omnivore on the belief that we are gonna try and be in the Saps plan. Yeah, I don't know, we had to... Uh, Traxos also could have been the uh, Sapperling maker. But, you know, we were drafting the hard way, it happens. So I think this is an Omnivore pack, but... I want to call out the, like, Chronicler is what I'm talking about in terms of this is the two drop you want in the set, not, not two drops that are only two drops. You want two drops that are two drops or six drops. Not that we're taking a red card here, but just calling out that that's what I'm talking about. And we'll take Omnivore and hope for some good sap hookup here. I don't like this deck so far, though. It doesn't. It's not doing anything remotely powerful. Oh, scary. This is Dominaria. Ooh, an Icy. We'll take an Icy. Uh, we are passing a Baloth Gorger and a Thorn Elemental to do so. I'm very medium on Soothsayer. I'll, play, I'll, I'll run it if I've got it, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. Icy untaps Traxos if we still want to play it. Voltaic Servant could also wheel again. We'll see, but Icy is just great. That improves the deck quite a bit, very quickly. Still only have two cards that trigger Traxos, though. So right now, Traxos isn't a play. I wonder what the time-traveling supercomputer would say about Traxos versus the Sapperling Migration Pack 1, Pick 2. Because we might not end up playing this at all, but in the decks where you do play it, it ends up being a dominating card. So you're taking this chance on having a dominating Traxos at the risk of not playing it at all, whereas a Sapperling Migration, as long as you end up in green, is going to be just a super solid mainstay playable, right? Well, maybe we're just competing for these colors, and that's part of the problem, but the packs continue to suffer. I'm going to take Joyra's Familiar. It uh, puts us a step closer to being able to play Traxos and encourage us, encourages us to find even more, since it rewards uh, historic spells, making them cheaper. Uh, and again, like, what are we taking if we don't? A like garbage green bear, a garbage green four drop, a garbage black four drop, a garbage green three drop. I mean, garbage, garbage, garbage everywhere. I'm going to take the familiar. Uh, if someone's doing the red, blue wizards thing, they might be getting a little hookup here with the fire fist adept. That's a great card if you're in wizards.
I'm, I had turned off the uh, sleeve bling channel points redemption because I was on my secondary account, but since we're doing a side draft with chat here, I'm going to go to my main account, and if someone wants to redeem, redeem sleeves, we actually have a bunch on this account. All right, a vicious offering is at least a, a nice playable for us. It was our pack one, pick one, so good to see another one of these. We're not really doing, uh, nobody's ever really doing Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. I've never seen this. I know that's not true. I think I had, I've had this cast on me once, and it was amazing, and I laughed. I mean, <laughs> if someone makes this work, you just have to tip the cap, right? Okay, Wild Onslaught. Deathbloom Thalad is our pick, though. I saw Wild Onslaught and was like, okay, we can take that at least. And Voltaic Servant certainly does the Traxos thing. Traxos Voltaic is a two card combo because you can just untap Traxos every turn. Uh, but I would rather take. We're low at threes also. If we wheel these or pick them up in pack three, that's fine, but I'm not going to prioritize Traxos Combos, com Traxos combos over uh, Deathbloom Thalad here. Animus is removalish, er, removal but it's not premium at all. Well, Magic Craig, it's a fan favorite format. A lot of people like it. Uh, I like it. It has some. It has some flaws. But in a sense, the flaws contribute in a lot of ways to the things I like. So I don't know. Man, I keep getting offered these servants that I just can't justify, even though, boy, if we had three servants, we could. But although, again, it's like servants aren't good. They're just OK. And Traxos makes them good. So I don't like prioritizing them, but I'll play them in a Traxos deck. I just want a skin witch, though. This is, this is what I'm looking for. Blood Towel, uh, Blood Towel Candle is decent for us, too. It's removal that could trigger Traxos. Yeah, I use I, I phrase things very carefully. True, I did not say everybody loves Dominaria, or even that it's not controversial, but just that uh, many people love it a lot, which I think is quite true. Ethan Fleischer called it the best magic set of all time on Twitter yesterday. He's coming at it from a holistic design perspective, though, not just a limited perspective or whatever. Stronghold Confessor, another hyper medium creature. These mid range creatures, even though it's got two modes, I don't like either mode on this one. I think I take a glider on the chance of it, uh, us, us being a Traxos deck. I don't like things in the format that say they can't block, though. Again, I'm not really a can't block kind of player in this format, but you do what you gotta, and we're drafting in and playing in pod, so it's we can't all be Sultai. We can't all be long game Dominaria control. I think uh, while we... Anyway, I was saying, like, some of the some of the named drawbacks of the set are like the fact that it doesn't have great aggro uh are reasons that i think the fact that this format doesn't have great aggro is what makes decks sultai decks that go long and do crazy stuff sing so i'm a little hesitant you know even though i could say well the format could use a little bit better aggro i'm worried that if i give this format a little bit better, better aggro, then I take away what I love about the format, which is a lot of late game haymaker brawls. I'll take a servant here, though.
white and red were bad together, and each of them could do something with other colors, but but uh, white, Boros was really suffered in this format. I'm going to take Chronicler out of... I mean, <sighs> we're never going to be so historic that I'm playing Sparring Construct in this deck, I don't think. So I'm going to take Chronicler from one of my opponents. Oh yeah, Gruel. I haven't even cons like green, red. Actually, green, red. I like uh, uh, Jund is a place that I would end up in this format too. Grow from the Ashes would allow you to incorporate red or white pretty readily if the table wasn't interested. Thorn Elemental comes back. Nice finisher. We'll take it. It's kind of like it means we can cut a Primordial Worm. Like Thorn Elemental is just a better Primordial Worm. One mana more. It uh, get some extra toughness and has that ability to just, oh, you're at seven? Well, then you're dead. Sorry. More garbage cards. We'll take the cheapest garbage card. Did this set have Rada? I don't think Rada is in this one. Is Rada in this set? We'll let somebody else have the old Navigator's Compass. Even an historic deck doesn't really want that. I guess that shows how tuned into uh, Gruel colors I am. Is Rada Gruel in this set? Uh, doesn't matter. Hope to not play that. Ah, yes. Now that... No, wait, that's not... Oh, yeah, Rod is old, but not in Dominaria. Hmm. Oh, what was our last pick there? I didn't see an island. Hello. Well... Untamed Kavu is an excellent creature. Garna could be splashable. It's a legendary creature, and we have a grow that could help us splash it. Forebearer's Blade. It's colorless. It's an artifact. Uh, it's so it, you know it's historic. It it's not that great, but it does yeah it does combo with Traxos. Hmm. It's blade or. Kavu, I believe. Oh, yeah, it does give Traxxas Vigilance. That is a good combo. Okay, that's enough. Let's do that then. I see what you're saying. Let's go ahead and take the Blade. And between the Blade and the Manipulator and the Familiar and the Lance and the Servant, then we can play Traxxas. This is not good. This is great, but we're not there. I think we want Soul Salvage number one over anything else here. Spore Swarm is, is good. We're not really doing anything broken with saps, though. We're not like... We're green-black, uh, but we don't really have a sapperling thing going, unfortunately. So I like Soul Salvage here. Memorial of Folly is a land-based Soul Salvage we could consider, but this gets two. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to take Memorial. If I, if I want this job done, I should probably put it on a land, right? Uh, Soul Salvage can... Uh, let's see, we're not in blue, so we can't get Soul Salvage back easily. Yeah, let's take Memorial. It's the same job, but it's on a land, so I think that's correct. Clutches! Clutches makes me clutch my pearls. Um, if we had a little bit more of a leaning, you could make a case, but grow plus hinterland, not enough to try a double blue card. So we could steal that from somebody. 
Uh, really, I think this is just going to be a reminder that we, we should main deck a broken bond. We'll give the clutches player with our broken bond. How about that? I'll take another skin witch here. I also like that mammoth spider. I love a mammoth spider in a deck in this format. Often you have just, there's a lot of four power flyers running around. So five toughness reach is a, is a nice stat in this format. Generally, I love to be blue in this format, and so it kills me to pass a clutches, but we're not in blue. That's how it goes. Well, I was talking up the Mammoth Spider. Now I might have to take it. I feel like we're in the wrong lane. I'm taking uh, medium cards in green and passing great cards in blue. Uh... Everybody else maybe just drafted me off of this stuff, though. Love uh, Mirari's Conjecture deck. Could also, I mean, we could take it and splash. Like, are we, maybe we have, maybe we have the ability to consider the Conjecture. We got Offerings, Grow. Trouble is we don't have, we only have like the two sorceries and just a couple of, we just don't have enough spells. We don't have enough spells to do to splash conjecture. So we just gotta take the spider. Pierce the sky. Maybe we just take a tome here. I don't like this either. But we are going to have some historic cards in the yard. And what are we taking if not? Pierce the sky? Because we're looking to play Traxos, I'll take the Tome, but not loving it. Not loving this deck at all. Right now, no reason to play the harbor. <clears throat> but at least we have a deck. I mean, this is 23 playables and a land. If I had to ship this, I would grudgingly do it. But if I cut the cards I don't like, like there's a lot I don't like here. All right, Gorger is fine. Fungal Plots is a lie. Land of War Scout is a lie. But Gorger is just exactly what it is. Medium Beef. East wants the green trick. I haven't found this to be a very tricksy format, but maybe... Maybe that's working for you. Maybe, it, maybe it's what this deck is needing and I'm not paying attention to that, but... Like, really don't want to play that. Not happy, not thrilled playing Grow without the ability to splash. Like, if you're not splashing, it's not that big a deal. But still, uh, kicking Grow to get to Thorn Elemental and just have lots of mana out isn't the worst either. Might need just another Worm here. Yeah, that's why I say plots is a lie. You really have to be deep, deep, deep into sapperlings before plots is acceptable, I find. Uh, we have a blade and a lance already. Taking another jousting lance seems wrong, but where is my life gone if I take Chainer's Torment? So I will take a Gift of Growth now. We'll take a combat trick. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that's one way to put it, Jim. Um, it's trying, I mean, it just doesn't have much synergy. 
where its synergy is off color, but that part doesn't matter as much to me. I mean, because the synergy stuff we're doing with Traxos is largely artifact based anyway, like that's okay. We'll take another Omnivore here. Omnivore also significantly worse without a Sapperling contingent in the deck. This is definitely not where I want to be with a green-black deck, but it's not without merit. It's not without ability to win. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's slightly more... Like, what, But what are you talking about, Jim? That, like, because... We're talking about Traxos being affected by artifacts, legends, artifacts, legends, and sagas, right? And artifacts are colorless, and legends and sagas are in everything. So while there's more, like, payoffs in the other colors, I feel like the enablers are everywhere. We'll take Animus, though, another interaction, at least. Yeah, this is really not gone well, though. Right, but I'm saying, Jim, but the pay the, the enablers are not cards that are, uh, with the exception of like the 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 servant or whatever. the the innate sorry, the the enablers are just playable. I, you're not having to warp anything, is what I'm saying. I'm going to take this over a protector, although maybe we just need creatures of any kind. I'll take a protector because maybe we just need creatures of any kind here. And Guardians is playable but unexciting. A lot of playable but unexciting here. A Druid back, maybe. Cut Gift since I picked up Animus. Maybe cut the protector. I don't know about 5C, David, but um, double splash grow, absolutely. 4C it would, is a little bit more like uh, what I'd be, is, is more common than 5C because grow would allow you to double splash, right? I'm gonna take call as a good card we don't want our opponents to have. Invoke will. Keep our icy alive. <laughs> yeah, is this our deck? Could be. It's our creature count. I've got 15 creatures. That's not the worst. Yeah, I think this is kind of it. We can play Wild Onslaught, but we're not going wide enough for me to want to do this. I think we are battling somebody for Sapperling cards, and it shows. And we're going to face some sweet sapperling deck that has all of our tools. I think there was, like, let's see, I passed two sapperling cards. I passed uh, pack one, pick two, sapperling migration. And what did I take over that? Uh, I think maybe it's a forebearer's blade over the... Yeah, uh, there was some four mana uh, make three saps, and we took something else over it. I can't remember what now. Death Bloom? I can't remember. But anyway, I think this is our deck. Not not amazing, but I've seen worse. Yeah, Spore Swarm was what we passed. I'm trying to remember what we took over it. All right, pop back over here. Get some arena audio going.
This is Dom versus Chat. All right. Well, well, well. I find this deck to be aggressively average or aggressively below replacement, really. This is kind of, to me, like a uh, a four, four out of ten, four and a half, five out of ten. Not great, Bob. about Sam Burley Zendikar. Let's see. We want 9-8 what? I guess 9-8 green makes sense with the grow. Although there's more to do on, more black that we want to do on two. Eh, I think, uh, I think I'm going to go nine, eight black. And no sap. I'm going to pick, I'm going to put Omnivore on the box because Omnivores love Sapperlings and they have none to work with. This is such a sad Rling deck. Yeah, we have some green green cards, but they're uh, mid range. You know, they're in the mid. I, I really want to be able to drop uh, cast a vicious offering on two if we need to uh, and drop it. I, generally, I want skin witches to be up here, but really nice to be able to offering. And one of our lands requires black, and we are going to sacrifice it. So I like this. Yeah, it's a little better. All right. We're going to put on a clinic of making a medium at best deck sing. That's the plan. Well, I certainly talked down this deck, so maybe one of you will uh, be like, nah, Ryan's talking it down, but he's going to win anyway, and you can vote for me. You can't bet on your own games. Come on now, no betting on your own games. Unless you want to throw me a win, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. You can, you can take a dive, that's fine. Never mind, go ahead. I'm going to keep this... You called first dibs on playing? Well, I'm not paying attention. I uh, Talk amongst yourselves, competitors. Figure out who's going to be next. So here's a classic spot. I could go ahead and play a skin witch. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna hold up the offering and hope we find a third land. Not going to use a Vicious Offering on either of those. We, we did find our third land, so that's cool. We can drop a Croson Druid and just try and hold the line here a little bit. Nice thing about bad cards is that I don't mind throwing them in front of uh, telegraphed combat tricks or anything at all. 
Oh yeah, I should do a power pull. Here we go. Well, 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 Robert, we have found our enemy and it is you taking my cards like a big jerk. Uh, I could go with the Grow to find some land, or I can go with the Forebearer's Blade and try and hook it up to the Druid. Trouble is, uh, if you'd go through a lot of work to hook up a Forebearer's Blade and you don't have something to switch it to if they kill the equipped creature out from under you, it's a real blow to your mana. So maybe I should, but I could play this and not equip it next turn. I mean, if we, um, I think I'm going to do this because right now Robert has indicated that Kroos and Druids can successfully block these. So we're going to see if Druid can continue to do the blocking job. I'm going to play the Forebearer's Blade. Next turn, if we find land, uh, we can do uh, Omnivore. If we don't find land, we can grow or equip the blade. But uh, that's LOL, Tron. One or zero is LOL. Well, both of those are pretty laugh worthy. <laughs> zero isn't an option because it seems mean, but he put LOL on the list. Hmm. Well, actually, I should be down here too. All right. Telegraphed, but again, gonna call here and hope uh, that we suck out a trick from Robert and then drop an omnivore next turn. All right, well, now we gotta grow. Well, actually, yeah, at 17, we gotta take a turn off and grow, and we're gonna take. Uh, hit down to 12, but we can potentially recover from here. Um, if we come up with a basic land, we can win grace for some extra life and a blocker in the air. And also familiar. Really depends on what Robert has behind here. We have a hand that can manage what's on the board, but if Robert has a lot of action behind, uh, a lot of go-wide action, we could be in trouble. Uh, in this case... Also looking at a possible two spell here, we could skin witch and eh, we can't two spell though. I guess since we can't two spell, we got a win grace. Yeah, witch and offer is would be two spell, you're right. Trouble is offering, like, this is such a problem. Either either two toughness is enough to make blocks here or we're dead. That's kind of my feeling. Like if Robert can make it so that saps can get through this two toughness, we're we're done for. And just trying to make him have it that way. He's doing the hokey pokey with the disciple, which kind of suggests I don't have a trick. I'm trying to figure out if I'm offering the disciple in, in this uh, trick offering. I'm not going to fall for that, though. Too many things could make this go wrong that don't go wrong here. So I'm just going to block a sap. No biggie. Only the consensus best card in the format. We got this. We got this. Hey, we have a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, trouble is it doesn't untap. <laughs> so let's go. Can we do anything? I think that it really is just GG, Tron. Um, especially with the, uh, the fast start. In addition... What can possibly be done? Plus three, plus zero, technically blocks, but it, it, what, it just doesn't matter because we kill Multani, Multani just comes back. I mean, uh, let's look in our deck though. Maybe we maybe I'm not, oh, I can't, uh, it's not showing me. Uh, untapped, GG not helping me on that one. Do we have anything in the deck that answers Multani? Icy, we get an Icy, we can just tap it down forever. So that's our plan, find Icy. All right, so how do we live to find Icy? We... 
It's got trample too, though. That's what's so brutal. <laughs> like, how do we even survive next turn? I don't think we can survive next turn is the problem. Uh, skin Witch hold up offering, I guess. But, you know, there's no shame in losing the Multani. What I'm happy about is that I did the work of checking my deck. What are my outs? What am I playing to? What's the plan? Uh, so even though the plan is like slim to none-ish, at least I did the work of looking at what my options were and coming up with, okay, if I could stack my deck, do we have a chance? And the answer is, yeah, we have a, a, a very narrow chance. But I, I don't even know, do we have a chance? Because let's see, if they if Robert swings away here, I mean, part of the chance is that Robert messes up, frankly. I think if Robert swings away, we don't have a chance. But we're giving Robert a chance to mess up and, and not do what he just did. But Robert's a good player. He's figuring it out. So I think that probably does us in. But we do the, have the Vicious Offering play. So what we need to do here is um, actually reduce, like... How should we do this? Because I can put the witch on Multani and shrink Multani and actually eat it. Um, of course, Multani comes back. But again, it, we're just trying to buy time here. Uh, and But to do that, that means sack. Maybe we do it this way. We put Wind Grace on Multani, Skin Witch on like the unicorn. And then we sack, uh, we sack the witch to shrink Multani, take four here and eat. And this is cute. I don't know if it buys us enough time, though, even if it works. It might not even work here. Robert has cards, but it, assuming this works. Yeah, it didn't work. So completely done for now. Good job, Robert. It's justifiable, Jinx. Wow, Robert got the, the green bombs. I'm like struggling to find anything I care about in my in my deck and Robert just shows me Multani and Allosaurus. Right, right. Nice seat, Robert, well played. He's dead, sir. That man's dead back there. He must be dead. He was worse than dead. His brain is gone. I think that's the correct pick, Jinx. I would take uh, Eldest Reborn over Traxos, pack one, pick one every time. Eldest Reborn just doesn't, it is just almost as dominating as Traxos without the uh, hoops to jump through. Good luck, Tron. I hope you all do it. Like, I don't like my deck anyway, so it would be hilarious if you all 07 me today. I would love it. Because <laughs> if you 07 me, you know what meme I'm going to play? I do my head toss, check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? Good as Well, because it, it doesn't matter. You can 07 me, and that's going to be true. No problem. Thanks for playing with me, Robert. Well done. Nice deck. You took all my you took all my cards, man. I'm not really happy about that. I got to be honest. Well, not all of them. You can have the white ones, but you took my green cards. Servant here on two. Uh, of course, Tron can suit up the Evangel and get through us, but that's all right. 
Uh, oh, I could also, there's an argument he made for letting Tron suit up the Evangel and offering, but there's no guarantee he's going to do that, so I'm going to drop the Servant. Oh, yeah, July too. That is busted, Robert. Nice seat. Well played. We could grow since we don't have anything else to do that's super relevant, but we can also vicious the Evangel and eat it. Um, we could also just play the Lance and prepare to hook that up eventually. I'm gonna keep the Vicious Offering up. We get a free attack. They refunded you 10k gold. They they basically gave you the, the um to uh, answer Hodge. Uh, yeah, basically uh, Hodge says I spent 1500 gems, had a bad experience, reported it, and they refunded me 10k gold instead. They probably since they sell gems for dollars and gold is an earned currency maybe it makes a difference to them on the inside to do uh the gold side but it's effectively it's a free entry into a draft i mean you can you for no resources out of your account you get to replay that draft experience so as long as they provide that they've done it right well you took my cards pack two then clearly that's when did you get the um, uh, the Allosaurus? You must have opened the Allosaurus too, because I never saw that. Um, all right, I am going to. So, sorry, Tron. Uh, if you watch this later, not trying to slow roll. You just uh, you know that I'm just chatting with chat. But uh, so, one interesting thing about combat tricks and combat here like my plan is to shrink the evangel and eat it with the servant but do i block first and then do it or do i cast this and then block the question the, the, it depends on whether or not if they have something do you want the block to to still be in place or do you want the option to not block if they've got a response? In this case, I want the option to not block if Tron has a response. So I'm gonna try shrinking it now ahead of blocks and see what happens. They could give out draft tokens, I suppose, math. Uh, it It's possible that they want a consistent reimbursement. And like, um, if you give out a draft token, like let's say I had uh, a bad experience with a quick draft. If I had a bad experience with quick draft, then a draft token is gonna let me uh, upgrade to a, a, a more expensive draft. Whereas if you consistently just give the amount of gold needed per event, you're giving the same thing out uh, in terms of what you're giving out and you have a uh, plan for how you're doing it, you know, a, a consistent way that you're doing it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go uh, Lance here and hold up offering again. Tron didn't have anything for the uh, Lance last time. I know that I could attack and uh and untap itself but it also telegraphs the second offering and i want tron to again try to get in with the thalid and i'm gonna do the same thing here that i did last term now i am using my removal like i might be being hasty here you can make an argument for not even using these offerings on this type of stuff and just wait till i get to the coilos and um 
and save the offerings for, for a bigger game later. Yeah, like Mike said, take it. I'm kind of just maybe even doing a little bit of fancy play syndrome here to, to do that. Although it did pull out a, a syncopate. And you see what I mean? Like th this is why I wanted to, especially against blue, resolve my combat affecting spell before I even block. Manipulator, nice, nice. Happy to see that. Great punisher of equipment. And glider can't block. You could also grow, uh, double kick the grow here. But I like getting manipulator going, especially uh, Tron being empty handed. Manipulator, of course, if you put an upkeep stop, you can tap down land ahead of the main phase and deny your opponent mana, if that's the kind of correct play. But in this case, Tron making a nice move here to make each creature uh, the same size so that uh, we can't manipulate down, you know, four power. We can only manipulate three power this way. And we'll manipulate the ground power since we can't block the air anyway. How many free to play counts do I manage? Uh, three of them. And my, and three is all I've needed to play all the magic I want to play while getting paid well by wizards to do so. Basically three accounts gives me 12 wins per day before I am not being paid well by wizards anymore. And I find 12 wins a day to be plenty of magic for me. I mean, you know, for me, that's like 187 games. No, for me, that's like 14 games. Come on. Uh, yeah, I like grow for icy mana here. That's a good idea. Let's kick it. Ooh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, I was making both of them up. I am neither an 85% win rate or my real, real, real win rate. Well, I constructed, I don't even know. My constructed win rate is probably terrible because I scoop so quickly. <laughs> I will just uh, snap scoop if things are going poorly and constructed. It's, it's not a non-bow if you're aggressively tapping blockers. Hey, look, combo. Speaking of combos, not non-bows. How about Traxos? Uh, gonna wait. We want to actually kick the Druid here. We're, you know, we're, we're losing a race, but I believe in our ability to get the Croson Druid down and get some life back. Might need to start, but we get Traxos down and we can start tapping the Flyer and blocking the uh, Thalid. So it should be, this is a good stabilization play unless Tron has a counter for it or something. Can't equip this Lance yet though, cause I need all the mana. Uh, and I'm not gonna send the Servant cause I wanna untap Traxos. And I wanna have two blockers in case Tron has something. Now with only when it, when Tron only has two types of lands though, uh, Giganto Bear. Uh, 
Abomination. Well, interesting. We're going to go manipulate the Abomination. We're going to Servant the Icy and use Guardians to untap Traxos. Lance up Traxos. Doesn't do too much. If we have the extra mana, we can, though. Let's see. If my plan is Guardians... No, I have uh, five, six mana for Icy Guardians, so not going to suit up the Lance yet. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. If we suit up the Lance, the first strike can attack through the Abomination. Well, I've already executed this plan, but I'll, I'll consider that next time, Mike. But this will get us through for this turn. Mike has a good line as well. Could also hold off on Guardians. Um, there's no other, you know, it's, no, it's just kind of a 4-4 four, four for 5, whereas we could get a 3-3 three, three for 4 with, yeah, no, we'll just take a 4-4 for four, 5. That's right. That's fine. And we're going to say it's up to May. Okay, so we may return, so we'll just say this and decline. Up tap. Bring up the icy. Now we have to decide as well here whether we are accepting swings from the abomination. Um, I don't think we can take an attack from the abomination here. Uh, so I'm going to tap down the abomination, take the three in the air, and then got to find some... Get a Croson kick Croson Druid eventually will help out a bit. Well, we had lethal threats, but now I think we probably want to just take a turn and uh well let's see. We got Eight mana, so we can kick the druid, but if we do so, we lose our ability to manipulate. We get 10 life, though, and jumping to 14 may just allow us to take a couple of uh, uh, hits there. Yeah. I think we go ahead and... We can just kick the druid and then uh, and, and swing with the Traxos and the Guardians and have plenty of life to uh, survive their next attack, right? And we don't have to show them that yet, though. We can go like so. I'm going to leave back the servant, but ship this. This is the problem with Lance, as you can see. Like, we cast this early and because of the pressures of the situation, I've never really had a window to do it. We could have done the thing, the, the play Mike suggested a couple turns ago and equipped it, but we wouldn't have the Guardians out in that case, so I like this as well. Yeah, that's fair. I guess I was just trying to um, hit hard, but we are one for wanting, and it really one for, uh, one, one for halving if we count the Sapperling as a real card. But effectively, it's trading uh, value for damage, you know. Yeah, we could kill the Arcanist to reduce the blockers, but with Traxos trampling, I didn't care that much. I figured... Although that's a good point, too, with Trample getting the three toughness might be better than the two toughness anyway. So, yeah, maybe uh, I didn't think that through and we should have taken out the Arcanist. That's a reasonable call, Fenor. And we are just going to take this. And... Uh, Two cards in all this mana means Traxos probably isn't even connecting here. It makes me nervous about bothering to try uh, 
jousting lance, um, but we can, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. If they have nothing, we send in everything and win. So that's, it's just, uh, but I, I don't believe it is for the win math. I believe if we equip the Traxos, we're probably just um, gonna have Traxos return to hand and the equipment fall off. So yeah, I like putting the Lance on the Croson Druid here. And then if uh, if Traxos gets bounced, we can, because we did pass a couple of Into the Royals. So I'm kind of expecting Into the Royal Traxos here. And this gives us enough mana to replay the Traxos and manipulate uh, the Flyer. So let's do, let's do this. but expecting the bounced Traxos here. Yeah, you know what I mean. Might not be into the Royal, but it's into the Royal. Blink of the Royal. Although if it's into the Royal, I would think Traxos would not be blocked at all. So maybe it's not. I'm not sure what's going on here. But it's something. I'm sure Tron isn't just setting himself up to die right now. Befuddle, you say? Okay. Okay. Nothing to be done about that. Glad that it's not into the royal, though. Because now we get Omnivore plus Icy. Unblockable Relic Runner and a Glider is five, not six. So if we tap the Abomination, we're not dead unless Tron can come up with another point of damage here. Love the conjecture. What is he going to get for it? Instant card can get back Syncopate and Befuddle. But without another land, neither can be cast right now. Yeah, we probably tap the flyer and just chump the abomination if uh, Tron wants to send the abomination. And then uh, if they don't, we tap abomination to get in. Hey, workhorse, how you doing? Seems like good game, unless this is uh, this unknown card is something important. I am blocking with the Omnivore and not the Servant in case this somehow goes longer because of this card and I'm not thinking right about it, but I, I think you could probably throw the Servant in and have and leave more power available, but I, I'm, I'm leaving my combo piece around is my decision. All right, picked up one. I forgot to notch my loss, so we'll update this record for both the games so far. Oh, come on, Ryan. Typing. All righty. Looks like uh, math has challenged me, Hannah, so I'm going to take math on and then we'll get you next.
Good game, Tron. Well, lucky for me, because I needed it. Oh, but I still don't want to acknowledge my loss, it seems. There we go. Now it's all correct. Uh, no black, but we are no green, but we do have vicious offering and a forebearer's blade. We could at least cast. I'm going to keep. We got some time. Yeah, let's start here. Uh, we'll pass it along here. I don't think I want to even use the Vicious Offering on the Confessor. I'd rather just try to race it. I don't know if we're going to worry about that confessor. I'm not going to worry about it here, at least. Um, deck is doing what we thought, which is to say it's not that great, but it's not without powerful cards. It's just not very synergistic, and it doesn't have a super powerful top end like a lot of the decks in this format do. And here's why I'm glad we saved the offering, because happily we'll pick off this trapper. Whereas I was not going to be happily picking off a Stronghold Confessor. And we find a Croson Druid, which is nice. It gives us a three that blocks as opposed to a three that's waiting. Another Trapper Keeper. Well, nothing to do here but drop a blade, so we will. But I can attack. I can attack first. Uh, I don't think there's a good chance that the druid gets tapped anyway. If uh, Math wants to block and trade for the druid, we're thrilled. So go for it. Mike says no attack. Uh, I I did the attack because if math just happens to play an historic card, it's the same result anyway. I'd rather get two damage in if it's likely that uh, we end up tapped anyway. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh, Broken Bond isn't particularly playable, but we are in pod and there's some uh, good stuff going around. Make a 2-2. How are we making it? I don't even understand that at all. How are we making a 2-2? I don't know what that means, but... Um, I like uh, I like Windgrace Acolyte here. Again, I, with Double Trapper, I'm just figuring we're not really actually uh, blocking. I guess they both attack for three, and the life we get from this eventually comes anyway. So sure, I'll make the spider after attacks. I feel like the spider's just going to get tapped down, but it's okay. So with this, so with the Windgrace Acolyte, and they both do similar things, so that's fine. But I'm expecting Historic and Tap here. If not, hooray. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's a great turn for us. Held off Math's forces beyond the Confessor. And if that means that Math doesn't have uh, Historic, great. We're going to go with the Windgrace Acolyte here. And here's what I'm talking about. Though. We could also Broken Bond the Seal Away. We just saw enough uh, going around. We didn't see the Seal Away, I don't think, in terms of uh, actually seeing it. But there's enough going on, even that we saw, that I like the Broken Bond. And then we're picking up things like this, too. But Windgrace Acolyte is what I want to do here.
It's a blank against Fenner. Well, I'll pre-sideboard it out against you then. <laughs> no, it's not fair. <laughs> All right. Well, we can uh, hook up the Forebearer's Blade. Let's do the Jousting Lance first. What if we go Jousting Lance equip? Yeah, uh, I don't want to send yet because it still trades, but if we get Lance and Blade on the Acolyte, we could uh, take over. So let's plan for that. Hope it works. It's got Trample. We could send... Nah, we're going to wait. The, the Jousting Lance makes it so good. It really puts it on math to have something soon. You like Blade on Spider? Yeah, Vigilance, but it, it gets blocked in trades with the Acolyte. I don't want to trade with the Acolyte when we're about to lance up and uh, win in the air. Uh, also, now with uh, math choosing not to play anything from hand on five mana and two cards makes me less... Uh, Confident that this is going to work, but I'm still going to try. All right. It did work. Broken Bond is a sorcery. If we want to use it on the seal away, we should do it now. Uh, I don't, you know, use it while you can and while there's a target, I say. It's not a super exciting card to get back, but... Uh, and certainly we may end up with a new target emerging. They were like, ah, but we have a plan coming up. Uh, we have uh, uh, Omnivore. If we, get, if we get a land, we're going to go Skin Witch and Primordial Worm. So. Three, three. Both were, are three to equip. This is one of the worst draws we could have there. In the sense that we don't have... Yeah, we're, we're still kind of stuck. We can throw... Uh, I like throwing Vigilance on uh, something like this spider here. Then we can attack with it, uh, right? If we... Well, if we attack 6-5 Vigilance spider, how do they block? They could block in two for one themselves to kill it. Um, You want to play Witch just to have a blocker? I kind of want to be greedy with Witch and take out Math's last two cards if we find a, uh, a land on the top. Uh, Jim, that's part of its range. In this game, we were happy to find a target, but there are much more powerful things that could happen, and we're, we are that uh, low on playables. This is not a good deck. <laughs> it's not, not a good deck. Yeah, let's go on to work. I agree with Mike. And, uh, and also... The uh, the range on this card is sometimes, oh, we have a target, let's take it. But sometimes the range on this card is got their most important thing. Land. All right. Now I'm liking our spot a lot. We get their last two cards here, and we have really good stuff behind. Now we just go for the win, uh, the uh, a two-turn win here. Basically, one card in hand. We don't know what that is, but Thorn Elemental on seven mana at seven seven picks up plus three and plus two to be eight nine ten eleven twelve, and it can't be uh, the damage can be assigned as though it weren't blocked. So we're just going to try a turn a two-turn game-winning sequence here. 
on the back of the Thorn Elemental. This card has to be something great to prevent the win here, so we're going to make him have it. And if it does prevent the win, uh, we try to win with everything else we have behind here. And the Forebearer's Blade ends up on something else. Mm, that's true. I guess, uh, e well, let's see. If we send... Yeah, I guess it was not pure lethal, but close enough. Oh, yeah, but first, yes, but uh, first, yeah, right, right, first strike to player still works. Yep, good point. Yep, yep, yep. Good thought, though. Lifelink might have messed that up, but the first strike just means we first strike the face first. Where did the challenge go? There it is. Good game, math. We're going to go first, and if I can help it, I'm not going to play the Skin Witch on two. I only play Skin Witches on two when Oppo is showing aggression that warrants it. I'm going to try to be greedy and uh, hold up a vicious offering instead. And white is suggestive of some potential pressure, but we're not under any yet. And heck, if we have to, we'll play Skin Witch on two next turn, or on, th uh, on three. But this is fine with me just uh, playing this other stuff. Let's see, Forebearer's Blade is three to equip. If we draw a basic land, I am going to equip, attack, and see if they want a double block, and then we can Vicious Offering for a blowout in that case. But we didn't find a basic land, so now what do we want to do? We could still Vicious Offering um, four, three. They're just going to trade four, three. I'm going to go uh, Thalid here. I didn't offer because, honestly, I, I really think that would have worked. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Hannah, if if Hannah watches this later, they can tell us how they're feeling about that move. But I felt like if we uh, if we did find our fifth basic land and attacked, we would have gotten a two for one out of the vicious offering. So I decided it was worth going for the two for one instead of the one for one. Interesting. In this case, though, I might just offer a Thalid, uh, you know, I might just offer blocks here all around. Um, not, if this dies, we don't care. Obviously, if we can get our Traxos, we love our Servant. But in the meantime, I don't even care about this that much either. So let's, let's uh, ask Hannah what's up. Although, yeah, I suppose if... Well, no, even if it's a plus one to team... It's still valid trading. Mike just says block one. I'm going to risk it, Mike. Maybe Mike's right. Let's see. Let's see if I regret blocking both. Memorial. All right. 
So now I like Forebearer's Blade on the sap because I don't care if it dies. Uh, yeah, that's true. We have a blade for Traxos if we uh, do find Traxos. Or is it non-token? Did I screw this up? No, equip creature. Okay. I didn't bother sending both because I actually didn't think Hannah was going to block uh, the the sap there. But I should have. It was free, basically. You're right. I should have because it was free. I mean, worst case, I untapped the servant that got blocked, right? What was the risk, though? I, I'm not sure there was a risk, Fenor. What, what, what was the risk of sending? Uh, anyway, we'll start with... Uh, well, actually, before we send, because we've also seen things like Reproach that would kill the Servant on attack, I want to play another creature, so if the Servant gets killed based on attack-based spells, we re-equip the Blade. So let's uh, drop our Spider. And then attack. Normally, this is my screw-up. I play stuff before combat when I shouldn't. Finally, it's correct. Yeah, but they've had a draw since then, so maybe they've got a trick now. Typo gutter humor. So we could cast and equip the lance, but this is a lot of open mana. I don't know what's going on with that. I kind of, well, but what else are we doing? I mean, if I'm not doing anything else, I might as well. I'm just very, uh, very concerned about this. That's okay, though. Yeah, what's going on? Hannah's got to explain themselves. Ah, we have it. Hannah is explained. Nice, Hannah. Well, we've got follow-up plans. I wouldn't mind if it didn't take... If it got our equipment, though. That's the rough part, right? Although there's nothing we could have done about that. Pretty powerful, but we're still okay-ish. Uh, we got a three-for-one coming. We're going to, unless we get witched first, we're going to witch Hannah. Ugh, that's rough. Love blue in this format. I'm going to witch first, because then we still have Vicious Offering and Ancient Animus as instance in response after an attack. And if we need minus five, we have a skin witch to sack. I don't think it is, though, Mike. I, Mike is saying I should go for the win. My presumption is against five open mana and uh, six cards that we're not getting the win here. So maybe, maybe I'm supposed to make Hannah have it. I just don't see that as realistic. I'm going to send the worm naturally here, see what Hannah wants to do, and with these as instant speed. So if Hannah's into chump mode, that's pretty good. I'm glad that was the play.
We don't know if the blue is the splash. It's possible. I mean, with uh, fugitive and journey mage and uh, and opt and divination and tempest gin, it makes me think that uh, this is blue white splash black, and it's just weirdly a lot of uh, swamps. Although I would say three swamps on a splash is suggestive that even that's not the best, right? Like I. If I'm splashing black, I don't even want three swamps. So even if this is all of Hannah's swamps, I, I'm wondering uh, what happened and what's going on. Yeah, I think you might be right that even if you're heavy, heavy blue, splash black, white, you're you're really asking for it. It's risky. Well, that's the thing. If Hannah has splashed two black cards, it probably isn't justified to use to put three swamps in your deck with a gin. So I think we just kill this with Animus here. Although, I guess Animus technically kills bigger things as long as the worm is out. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Hannah pausing on single blue. Could be uh, Syncopate. What's pausing on a single blue? Opt or Syncopate. Did see lots of ops. Uh, we do get uh, both Guardians and Vicious here, but let's start with an attack. Probably just going to get the uh, Worm chumped again. I'm going to leave the Witch back. I mean, I guess I could, like, we could Vicious offering the Journey Mage and then the Witch. But it still doesn't have attack. They still just block with Tetsuko, so I'm just going to send the Worm only. Thank you for the sub. It was indeed opt. Let's see what Hannah does with the scry. Bottom, 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 bottom. Yeah, there we go, bottom. I like offer before we untap, but I like waiting to see if Hannah does something on this turn. We have ourselves a Memorial to Folly. Nothing to get with it but a Death Bloom right now. Well, that's big. So now, uh, glad we waited because we're going to need to use Primordial Worm plus uh, Vicious Offering to win combat against Slyn there. Although now we can just go Thorn Elemental, uh, Threat, and win. This is an interesting draw. I was going to do this whole thing, but this is just to threaten GG next turn. Let's do that. Because then we have this threaten win with Vicious Offering at the ready. Next turn, we can swing everything. You don't like waiting, Mike? Well, there's the clutches we knew was in here somewhere. Must have been top deck, or we'd already lose have our worm stolen. Rough. All right, so now I'm gonna take this. Yeah, top deck the enchantment hate, and we'll get there. No. I think we have to, um, 
Block and kill the Thorn Elemental, chump the Slin Voda, memorial the Thorn Elemental, and um, and then try to get it back that way. Fenner says attack with both. Uh, yeah, because then we can... Oh, we, we do need... We threaten lethal. The tr Here's the trouble with attacking both. They have chump Tetsuko, chump Journey Mage. And then I guess we chump on the crackback. Um, I feel if we attack both, if they chump, that all goes horribly wrong. So I'm only going to... I'm going to stay back. We don't even need to, like, I guess we send the 7-6, but then they, yeah, we can do that. Because, all right, all right, I, I'm, I'm with uh, send 7-6. Yes, send 7-6. It's possible we get the Thorn Elemental out of it. If we don't, we probably get a chump, though. I would expect a chump. So there's the expected chump, but now we have uh, Vicious Offering, Thorn Elemental, Block with Guardians, Chump, Slin with Skin Witch, Folly, Thorn Elemental. That's our plan. And the plan is over. Good game, Hannah. Well played. Yeah, maybe it's not a good game. Good, good enough for me. <laughs> maybe I should have played that to the end, but... Come on, we that was uh trouble town. Yeah, sorry, that was that was that was me being too casual about it. I should have played it out. But good game, Hannah. Good game. Now nah, we're not mulliganing this. Easy keep. Yeah, chat's on me for scooping early, Hannah. I did have outs there, but it, it was pretty hopeless, but I had outs. Yeah, a lot of controversy around your inclusion of a blue, blue, blue card in your three-color deck. But hey, you got me. You got me. I'm going to drop a Lance here. Um, don't need a Servant. They're not going to, like, do anything to the Servant, so let's play the Lance. Gonna go Croson unkicked here. Of course, unkicked, but. Well, it worked out, Hannah, because you rope a doped me into the four for one. Four for ones are pretty good for uh, winning magic games. Teshar could pick that out of the sky if we wanted. Do we need to, though? Kind of like uh, Traxos this turn. Next turn, kick, grow, and have offering mana up into Skin Witch after that.
Uh, this attack suggests that uh, Papa is about to cast an historic spell that would just return the poet to the battlefield. So it's kind of a free attack with the poet. I'm going to make that assumption and uh, make this call. Also, happily trading a trick for the druid anyway. So, but fully expecting a free poet. There you go. Now uh, we have the grow play. I am going to kick the grow and get the uh, vicious offering. We may have to vicious the Yargle. Mike likes grow unkicked. But what do you do? Like, why? Because then we have... Lance equip? Um, I don't know. I figured I still have the Vicious Offering play, so I'm fine. Although I might want to do it while they're tapped out here. I see. That's fair. Just Lance it up to trade. I got greedy with my wanting uh, extra, extra lands. But I have what I have now. I'm going to say no attacks and follow through on my offering play. Is it? This apostle is rarely a pain. Uh, if I go for Vicious Offering, block something else, Vicious Offering, Yargle, and the Vicious Offering gets countered, then Yargle smacks us for a ton. It may be worth taking one from Poet or Servant here to ensure that Yargle is blocked regardless of what happens here, so that's what I'm going to do. Offering before blocks, if we get if that gets stopped, uh, also leads to the nine damage. So, yeah, I guess we can offer end of turn. That's a good point, Mike. I've never seen anybody do the Teshar Poet Saga loop, so if that's what Teshar finally does to actually impact a game of magic in a way beyond being a 2-2 flyer, then I'll be impressed and, and, and uh, be happy about that. Well, I still need to do this yet. Let's wait till we get literally to our end. There we go. Well, we get their last two cards, but then we have some uh, tough times trying to manage these flyers with nothing in our hand to do it. So, like, we're we're actually uh, extremely disadvantaged here and are likely to lose unless we find uh, flyer-based prevention right on top. Witch woman. It's not even a witchy woman. That looks like a witchy dude. I thought witch was like a gendered word. Maybe it isn't. Yeah, 
it's all well and good, but uh, nothing to do about these flyers. So we're kind of in trouble here. Big and useless. I mean, yeah, it could be female. Doesn't look like they're not presenting as female. All right, we got our combo. Combo! Combo! Oh yeah, combo time. Combo. Combo-rific. Is that a, a, a bald female? I just would, mainly I was curious if Wizards is treating witch as a gendered term or not. That's kind of, kind of what I was curious about. Should have killed the 2-2 two -two when it dropped so we could, uh, what I should have done no, I, I disagree that that was the problem, East. I strongly disagree that killing the 2-2 when it dropped was the correct play. Uh, I believe where I messed up, though, was uh, not taking Mike's line and using our creature plus equipment to manage Yargle. Because if we had used creature plus equipment to manage Yargle, then we would have had the minus two for the air. But we couldn't not manage Yargle. Yargle was a greater priority than the 2-2 two -two flyer uh, in our situation. It's just that I should have found a way to manage Yargle without removal. Uh, you know, you when you can use creatures for removal, then you get to use your removal on uh, other creatures as well. So that's, I think, the mistake of that game, not failing to pick off the apostle on uh on on first look sure i mean uh, east but that's what i'm saying the, the 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 point is the point is you are right that i should have used the removal i should have found a way to use that minus two minus two on the flyer but I strongly disagree that I should have used the minus two minus two on the flyer as soon as it appeared as if that was the important thing as if Nailing it immediately was the difference between winning and losing. It wasn't. The difference between winning and losing was me misusing my resources, my removal resources in general. Mm, I talk about using removal early if the job if that's my if that's my play in the early turn uh, it's not that you need to play the removal early in order to follow um, what i'm saying i'm saying um you know use your removal in the early turns if you don't see any future where you're going to be able to manage them but i uh, i mean we had it we had time there we had time there just you see what i'm saying like i, I mean I want to be. I want to identify where the mistake was, and I really don't think it was in not playing removal on two, like you suggest, or, or not not playing. Not isn't what it's on two. Not it wasn't about shooting that thing on sight. It was about playing so that I had the ability to shoot it later. I'm now two and three, is that right? Uh, no green yet. Can we keep this? We have Manipulator on four, Acolyte on five. Manipulator is the thing that could make this a keep, but it's a narrow one. We are on the play, so we're also not gonna be under huge pressure immediately. We're two green sources away from being able to even cast this Gorger, though. So as tempting as it is, I think the like if this were a single green to get going, I think I could keep this. Um, but uh, it's the fact that not only are we starting on four, but we're also far. We're also effectively mulliganed already with the Gorger. So I'm going to mulligan this. 
And we're going to keep this and ditch our worm, ditch the big end. Excuse me. Hey, look, it's a red card. This is still probably a wizard deck. You just don't get all the wizards you want. <laughs> not a weird either. Not a weird, not a wizard. It is a human warrior. Um, Malfinar snapped off my easy block. If I block here, though, I could be giving up my servant to the deal two damage spell. We don't have our uh, our combo piece, though, so I'm willing to do it. Go for it. Use cards on the servant. Yep. That was where we should have drawn Traxos for maximum punishment, but we didn't. Rating. Mobius. Hello, Mobius and friends. We decided to do a pickup draft today. We're drafting Dominaria because we went over to uh, mtgadraft.herokuapp.com and I'm drafting against viewers. That hurt. Gonna. Uh, Drop this and, well, let's see. We're at 14. Are we sending the Gorger? If we lose the Koilos, we take another six. That's a pretty big smack. So yeah, we're gonna play the Guardians. My question is whether we hit for four or not. Um, yeah, Equip Get Vigilance can do it too. But I'd rather uh, add to the board East. We can do the Equip Play later. I especially like equipping the blade after we have a second creature on board so if they kill our bladed creature we do get the free re-equip and i'm gonna go with mike's plan here it was my my only question is whether or not we were um attacking with a gorger or not and i think we have to risk it we gotta do some racing of our own we're out, we are going to threaten a lot of damage here, so if Malfinor does not have stuff for our cards, it could be good. We did pass uh, several into the Royal, or whatever it's called, you know, a blink of an eye. So I'm a little worried that we're going to get blinked and, and tempoed out of this, but it is what it is. We're going to try. Anyway, yeah, uh, Mobius viewers. So yeah, we drafted this over to the third-party website, and I'm, I'm drafting Dominaria against viewers. We're playing best of one so that everybody can get a chance to play. So this is interesting. We've got Warcaller attacking and Trickster not attacking. Mike says block. One of the reasons I'm reticent about blocking Mike is the whole uh, two creatures with the blade out. But I suppose you're right. We got to keep making them have it. And if it's a two for one, fine. That's a one for one. Okay. These equip costs just a little out of range. We're just a little off of uh, equipping this blade. And so I am going to just Omnivore again here. And now we're going to wait. If Fenor is out of action, we're in a good spot. The Phoenix can crack in at the, up above, but we can block on the ground and eventually start Vigilance attacking.
Well, we need some of our removal and aren't finding it. Let's go. Let's see if we put it on the omnivore, they can they have a double block no matter what we do. Let's put it on the omnivore so that if they double block and kill it, we have our best creature left behind, or maybe that's the reason to do it this way. But I get the Gorger blocks the Adept, so we really want to keep the Gorger back for that job. So I'm going to go on the Omnivore. I know they can single block, but I, that's fine. Yeah, that's true. I guess it gives Vigilance, but I don't want this dead. I don't want the... They can single block, but I don't want the Gorger dead at all. That was my feeling. I know it has Vigilance, but then they double block and it's dead. That was my problem. I just wanted it to live. Yeah, so are both of theirs, but... I just like this a little better. I like uh, my Gorger and against their Trickster versus uh, the other way. That's true. I guess, yeah, maybe I screwed that up. I don't know. It, like, it, it, it doesn't matter too much, though. Like... This is not a factor here, but yeah, now it matters. Now it's just like, yikes. But, but the thing is actually that makes it all what, how it doesn't matter. We're just getting, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about all this stuff on the ground as though I'm not being attacked by two Warcry Phoenixes that I can do almost nothing about. <laughs> So, uh, we're, we're talking about stuff on the ground like the like it matters to the outcome of the game. But we're going to see the last two cards before we die. Ha! Pablo, if you're losing channel points here, I don't know how clear I could have been that you should have bet on chat today. Anybody who bet on me, you deserve this. There was no point at which I told you this was a good deck. Not a single point. Is this a dead man, Doctor? Very dead, Mr. Spock. Thanks for that. All right, let's see if Jinx can finish me off. I didn't know there was a, I, I thought it was just 50, 50 betting. I, I didn't look too, I didn't have anything to do with the wagering setup, so. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. In that case, well bet. Sometimes you make the correct decisions and still lose, right? Oh, come on, deck. You could at least give us something we don't have to mulligan. But we have to mulligan this. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. I think I like uh, ditching Omnivore. Omnivore is really a hill giant in our deck, and Windgrace Acolyte does more, and Traxos is kind of our build around if we get Forebearer's Blade on it. Sweet! To be fair, it was tied, true. I, 
I know that I, sh I can play this to trigger this, but I don't think that's going to be our play. Oh, we didn't even do this instead. Okay. That's funny. I'm going to play the Omnivore instead. <laughs> well, to be fair, I made the decision of Omnivore over Traxos before I knew what Jinx was going to be doing. If I if I had known this was Jinx Jinx's play, I would have done it. Uh, this I would have ditched the Traxos anyway. Land. Really needed a land there. Um, we do get a double block, though. Mulligan into no land is not really a reasonable fight here. We saw the 3-2 uh, legend um, in somebody else's deck. Or no, the 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 yeah, the red legend is in was in somebody else's deck. Maybe there's two. Is an uncommon. All right, we're dead to removal. Oh, the red legend. Sure, I thought you were talking about the green, the red black one. All right, so now we got to figure out what we're blocking here. Confessor is returns to the hand, which is fine. Short sword drops off. Short swords. We dr we get whisper. They're both for four. Yeah, I guess we block whisper because this sends it back, right? And now, uh, let's see. I like, we can go uh, Traxos. I guess if Jinx had removal, tra we'd already be dead. So we can go uh, Traxos untap. Um, but Windgrace gains us some life right now, which uh, takes us out of range of removal death. So let's do that. We can't block now. Why can't we block? Wind Grace, it was a tough call. Traxos gives us untapped 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, sure we can risk Servant. Like, what else do we do? I mean, I guess we could take this and then play Traxos, but um, yeah, Traxos is worse, but that's if Jinx kills the servant. And we still got our wind grace here. Do my head well, had a win race. Baby, how you feeling? Can also um, get back. Yeah, I just need a forest here. We can go. Uh... Actually, any land should let us get our Traxos untapped.
Trouble is... Oh, yeah, that should work. That should work. Oh, no. It, we're, are we just dead? Are we just dead? Because they can make two three threes. One of them... They're both lethal, and we can't block it all. Yeah, we're just dead to the second sword here, unfortunately. Good job, Jinx. But... Man, you know, Jinx, good games. Jinx has a very good record against me, but I think Jinx will admit, Jinx has gotten also incredibly lucky against me. <laughs> oh my God, Jinx. I so have the deck to punish you. <laughs> like, give me, where's my, where's my minus two, minus twos? <laughs> Are you dead if I play server? Yeah, we're dead, we're dead. We're dead. So, good, good job, Jinx. But I'll take another. I mean, I'll take you on with this deck anytime. Like, I don't like our deck, but I like our deck against yours. Where's, where's my? Just the offerings. Didn't have the offerings. Didn't have the offerings. So you got me, Jinx. I'll let. I'll. I'll make him do it. But Jinx knows what's up. No, th th this deck is not good. That's what I'm saying. Part of its problem is lack of interaction, which I called out a lot. Um, but we have uh, Icy. Oh, like Icy Manipulator. We've got an Icy Manipulator against Mr. Equipment and Auras. Oh my God. There is no justice in magic today. There is no justice against Jinx today. <sighs> All right, Jinx. No wonder you hate Dominaria if you come at it with that crap. <laughs> but my deck is crap, too. Your deck is just about as crappy as mine, buddy. No, your deck is your deck is garbo against any good deck in the format. It's just that my deck is garbo too. <laughs> Valduk decks are I mean, sure. Jinx is going to do that some of the time, but th this is the thing with uh any you know, let's let's it's about risk reward and playing decks in Dominaria that use enchantments and equipment to augment creatures for an aggressive approach are going to lose to the better decks in the format. Um, my deck was not a good Dominaria deck. Um, and Sometimes Jinx's deck is going to crush often. And, and like, like I'm not saying Jinx's deck is like a some sort of uh uh, uh you know destined to be 20%. No, 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 no. I'm just saying against with, with the way this format matches up, a well-built deck in this format is gonna really give Jinx's type of deck a hard time. That's all. Uh, I just didn't have a well-built deck, and I, I had the tools. I had some of the tools, and I just found none of them. That happens. Uh, but um, aggro really got got me today, and that, I think that's uh, that's the. I mean, we saw like I had a very medium, medium, medium deck that was a mid range a medium mid range and it got rolled by aggro we got rolled by um i guess it was at fenor who had the uh the the flying tutus and uh really i just don't think that's i mean i build against it fenor i mean i, I think fenor says uh, aggro is secretly good in dom because nobody builds against it i'm going to push back and say fenor the reason that I strongly disagree. I'm always looking for twos. I mean, I said it from the beginning of the draft. I said the beginning of the draft that my 
whole approach is survive until you can recur value, and that the survive part is very important, and especially in pod, especially in pod, where, where you are going to be facing some aggro, especially in pod facing all seven opponents, you know I'm going to be facing aggro, so of course I'm looking for it. And I push back on your comment of nobody builds against it, Fenor, because I think one of the the reason that aggro is in general weak in the format is that you build against you build against it accidentally because you're running things like skin witches and chroniclers and uh, one threes for two in other ways. You know, so um, I think. If you tell yourself you don't need to worry about the early game because it's Dominaria, then yeah, you're doing it way, way, way wrong. Uh, but I think that the reason this format is bad again is bad for aggro is because the control decks naturally have good tools against it because they have these kicker spells where you get to use them on two if you need to or use them on six to take over. And that's why I feel like... Uh, uh, aggro is weak. You're right if people aren't going to take the cards to do it, but that's where I'm talking. Like, you're going to take your removal spells, and the removal is cheap and instant and everything, so I, I don't know. Uh, I hear what you're saying, that uh, that if, if people aren't going to prepare for any aggro, they're going to suffer, but that's not what we did, and that's not what the format does in general, I think. I think... Um, I think I was in, not in the best seat. I didn't play my best magic today, and I didn't have my best luck today. And what do you know, the result is a two and five. So no big surprises there. So it goes. But if you think Jinx is gonna beat me 70% of the time with that, that's, come on, no. My deck is bad, but it's not lose to that pile 70% of the time. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out, though. Always fun to play against chat. Always fun to play Dominaria. So awesome. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time, YouTube friends. Sure, it was synergistic and, and easily disruptable by... Anybody with good cards. <laughs> Easily disruptable by anybody with good cards. Unfortunately, so is my deck. Uh.